Hey, I'm here with John Caldwell, president of New Media for uh, National Geographic, National Geographic Society. John, welcome to Digital Hollywood at Marina Del Rey on the marina here at the beautiful Ritz Carlton. Anyway, uh, enough about that. Let's talk about digital media and National Geographic. Uh, what do you guys uh, have going on right now that's especially, that you're especially excited about? Well, a lot. So the first area that I talk about is apps. So we're developing for, I mean, the iPad, my iPad 2, which I love. Um, like everybody, or most people in content, we're developing like crazy for the iPad. So we've developed a ton of apps, some of which have just done really, really well with consumers. So we're developing apps around maps, around photography, around travel, around kids, um, a whole bunch of small games that are like, like puzzles, and it's great because we're able to sprinkle the app store with all these National Geographic experiences. All of them are paid, so we're getting, getting, getting the opportunity to make some money back and then reinvest in creating more apps. But the big area where we're making our push is in our magazines. So the National Geographic magazine and Traveler and in late June, National Geographic Kids will come out in fully interactive versions. So you go into the magazine, you can see videos, you can see interactives, you can learn behind the scenes information and facts about the photo shoots and about the photographers and about the explorers. And it takes the paper magazine that we've been selling for 122 years and it really makes it a you know interactive experience. That ends up being quite a chunk of money you get you get from the iPad store, the iPhone store, the App Store downloads. Um, it's still relatively small though. Okay. And, there, and relative, I mean relative in terms of like we've got six million yeah. subscribers to the magazine. So I think today we've got you know somewhere in the neighborhood of fifty or sixty thousand subscribers digitally. Mm -hmm. But it's early. I mean the market it's really early. The app, the iPad's only been around for a year, so we have huge hopes. But but still, we do keep it in perspective in terms of saying as exciting as the, as the iPad is, and it, right. it's unlocking all these promises that we had hopes around. We still got six million folks who you know every month are receiving a printed copy of the magazine, and others who have Android as well. Yep. Um, where it's not so common to charge actually for apps. Do you, is it also, uh, are there ads too to kind of help boost that on the app? We are, in the magazine, we're just introducing ads. We did not have ads um, in any of the previous interactive versions of the magazine, but just starting in June, we're gonna, ha we're gonna have ads. And the reason that we're doing that strategically is we want our advertising partners to start getting used to the fact that the interactive edition is an extension of the print. So okay. when they're making purchases with us in terms of going after specific audiences and demographics, that this is another way to reach those demographics and audiences. And again, I mean, nothing's free, right? So right. we need the revenue in order to be able to um, reinvest back into the creation of the content and the apps themselves. Fair enough. So. Then you know, I, would, I guess I would wonder um, how much. Well, how much is the digital subscription? So we have Apple has just only allowed subscriptions to roll out. So we haven't rolled out through the App Store okay. subscriptions. But we're start. We we will start probably in July, and we're anticipating that the subscription will probably be somewhere from fifteen to twenty dollars for the year, which is on par to the promotional, same price promotionally that you get for the print. Version. So today you buy a newsstand price, which is comparable to if you were to go to newsstand and buy it of uh, four ninety nine. Okay, per issue. Per issue. Yep. But you're getting so much more. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the that's you know the, the, joking aside. That's the selling point is that when you buy an interactive version. As you said a minute ago, you're getting all the B rolls of the photography. You're getting interactives. You're getting maps. I mean, you're getting substantially more content than you're getting as it relates to a print because we also don't have the costs associated with it. So unless we have advertising print pages to support printing additional stuff, we don't have that digitally. So right. other than other than the file size and the bandwidth 
charges to download, we don't have shipping, we don't have paper costs, we don't have printing costs, we don't have any of those things. And you're getting the same. I mean, but how could you possibly keep a, the same level of subscribers? I mean, you know, there's something so great about getting that, you know, the yellow, the yellow bound magazine in the mail, with, you know, whatever, the brown paper over it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it seems it seems hard to believe that you could actually charge the same amount as as with the hard copy and, and really keep uh, the same amount of subscribers more or less engaged. But um, we'll it's see. an issue that everyone. You're, you're, I mean, your your point is is a really important one because it's something you could be talking to me from National Geographic. You could talk to someone from Condé Nast, from Meredith, from Time Publishing. From New York Times, everyone is struggling with the same question. I mean, will consumers, in you know, in large numbers, will they be willing to to, to make that payment? And that's where one of the things that's interesting that Time announced last week is they're going to allow all of their print subscribers to get access to their interactive versions for free. Wow! So they're creating that link, which I think is very smart, and it's something we're definitely going to take a look at. Are there any projects coming up that you could talk about that are really exciting, whether they be more kind of gamified yeah. or interactive? And so in our games group, we have a virtual world that we launched, uh, I want to say, seven months ago called Animal Jam. And this is in partnership with a uh, games development company in Salt Lake City called Smartphone. And it is just doing incredibly well. So this is targeting kids, 6 to 11. And it's a virtual world similar to Club Penguin. Where you get your avatar and you come in. They've created all these different um, areas of their world around like a jungle world, an Antarctica world. Um, in the fall, we'll be launching an oceans world. And the kids go in and they can do a lot of the similar, similar stuff that you do in Club Penguin where you can, when, you, when you do certain tasks, you get rewarded gems. You can then cash the gems in for virtual goods. But it's all shrouded in National Geographic storytelling and around conservation and exploration. We've got some of our, we a lot of our contents in there. Some of our explorers and scientists or characters in there. Wow. And it, it's just, it is taking off like gangbusters. So um, I can't disclose any, any of the numbers, but we'll be doing a press release hopefully within the next couple of months where we've broken through some incredibly fast growth thresholds. So that's really exciting. Um, and the second piece is, we'll be hopefully announcing, again at some point over the summer, is uh, we're going to go very aggressively into family gaming. So not just kit 6 to 11, but how do you go after what's happening around the family? It's all inclusive. And we think National Geographic as a brand gives us permission to get into this space. So we've got a partnership with a, with a major um, games development partner where we'll be launching a title on, um, hopefully by the end of this year, that will be family focused. And again, it'll all it'll weave in the National Geographic themes, the messaging, our content assets, um, and uh, you know we think that games is a, is an area that we've got huge growth potential. So I'm really excited about games. We talked about apps, you know, and the web. I mean, contrary to Wired magazine, the web isn't dead. At least from my standpoint, we're doing great stuff on the web. Um, we just won. Uh, I think it's today. We have five webbies. So, in terms of putting things in perspective, right? We got 20 million people a month yeah. that come to NationalGeographic.com, and you know, so we're doing a lot of exciting things uh, there as well. So. The last thing I would say is social media. You know, Robert Murray, who we were talking about a second ago, we're doing incredible stuff in Facebook. We've got something like almost five and a half million Facebook fans. Yeah. And what's feeding that growth is all of the content that I just mentioned, whether it's references to links in terms of nationalgeographic.com or apps or even games. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Thank you. Okay.